This podcast is brought to you by HEC Paris. Thanks very much, Laura and Veronica, for inviting me here and giving me a chance to discuss this very uh, interesting paper. Um, Lubosch did such a nice job in presenting the paper that I think I'll be very brief with my summary, only sort of uh, mentioning a few points that I need for my discussion later on, and then uh, mostly move on to my comments, which would hopefully keep me down to 10 minutes as well. Um, Okay, so the, 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 the motivating fact of the paper uh, is that there's this persistence underperformance of the uh, active management industry, uh, and yet it seems to be uh, quite big. So, uh, so, so why aren't investors uh, getting out of the active management industry? And the explanation offered is a single factor, which is uh, a single uh, effect, if you like, decreasing returns to aggregate scale uh, uh, um, can end up uh, going a long way towards explaining this puzzle, okay? Um, and the nice thing about this paper is that there is really just this, this one element in it. It's very minimalist. And, and in addition to explaining a, a great deal of the puzzle uh, using uh, this uh, 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 a single factor, if you like, um, uh, uh, Pastor and Strambo also have... Uh, uh, a, a prediction for the size of the industry, which is that the size of the active management industry should decline over time, but only slowly and only by a small amount. Okay? So the underlying economics is there's, there's, there's a very, very simple uh, uh, reduced form model. Uh, the parameters uh, uh, driving the total payoffs to each fund is, is uh, unknown. Um, and investors are going to observe aggregate returns from fund management and choose uh, how much to invest in, in, in active fund management versus passive benchmarks. And the crucial bit is that future returns depend not just on industry skill, but also on future aggregate investments. So, therefore, a drop in aggregate investment, um, ceteris paribus, makes it actually uh, uh, more attractive to invest in, in uh, uh, active management, and this mutes the negative response of investors to uh, poor performance, okay, and keeps the industry from shrinking. Okay. Very few elements from, from the model which I'll refer to in my, uh, uh, in my discussion. So there are these, uh, essentially these two relationships, uh, uh, a net of fees uh, excess return relationship uh, where alpha i is the net of fees uh, um, uh, expected uh, uh, excess return and a gross of fees uh, uh, profit function for, for uh, the fund level, which includes the, the proportionate fee, which is FI, SI, where SI is the fund size, right, which has this uh, diminishing returns to scale built in, okay? And when you put these two together, you get this uh, nice relationship that uh, Lubosch had uh, uh, earlier on on the slide, which is the, the, the net of fees uh, alpha, uh, expected from any fund is this aggregate number a minus b s of w uh, s, s over w minus f i. So I'd like to point out that the only variation across funds derives from differences in fees. Okay, so this is very much of an aggregate paper because then what uh, uh, Lubash and Rob do is they solve for a symmetric equilibrium where where uh, with single period mean variance optimizing investors where. Um, the, the, the fees are, are identical across funds. So, so in equilibrium, there's no real difference um, uh, across funds. Okay, so that, that, that's going to be a, uh, an interesting uh, uh, issue later on. Um, so A and B are the only unknowns. They have, you know, uh, a nice, uh, there's a lovely statistical structure to this uh, paper. I learned a lot from reading it. There's this bivariate uh, uh, normal truncated uh, priors, uh, uh, truncated for B being non-negative. And the case that's studied in much of the paper is that uh, when there's a, a, a risk aversion and uh, the limit of an infinite number of funds and an infinite number of investors, in the symmetric equilibrium, this uh, size of the industry obeys a cubic relationship. Okay? And so what investors do is they solve, they observe past returns and, and past industry sizes, uh, which, which informs them about the parameters of the model, which then gives, determines uh, an S over W, which then determines future returns, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm going to just skip the numerical exercise uh, because Lubosch has done that in, 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 in detail. Uh, uh, but, but the headline results are essentially that you can, you know, uh, reconcile with uh, a T stat of minus two uh, after 40 years, uh, a very large uh, 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 fund management industry, potentially 71% of, of assets. Uh, that's a static approach. And the other is if you actually dynamically compute the size of the industry, this is where you get sort of this, this dynamic implication that the industry will shrink, but only slowly, and remains at about 70% after 40, 40 years of, of data. 
Okay. Um, so I think this is a very nice topical paper. It's sorry and thought provoking. It's sort of, you know, it's a, it's a lesson to, uh, 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 to, to everyone. I made a couple of my PhD students read it straight away because it's a very nice example of how you can take, you know, one feature, uh, very minimalist, and sort of carefully drive all the implications. Uh, I have very little by way of uh, uh, quibbles with what uh, Lubosh and Rab actually do. So think of the remaining five minutes, so to speak, as, as me thinking aloud on how to interpret these results. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and there's going to be two, uh, I predicted my five minutes just right, so uh, there's going to be two uh, 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 ways in which I'm going to do this thinking aloud. So, so I find the result level, results in sort of the level of uh, S over W as being very, very persuasive. Um, I, I have questions, I don't have answers about the time trend in S over W that, uh, uh, that seems to emerge from your model, that's, that's point one. And then relating to some of my uh, comments about the nature of equilibrium, uh, you know, you're deliberately minimalist in your approach, but I just wonder whether this minimalism somehow understates the degree to which we should be puzzled by the active manage management puzzle, right? So, um, so let's, let's go uh, 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 through these two things in order. Um, so um, so the, the headline result, in some sense, is from 1962 to 2006, if you dynamically computed the size of the active management industry, it's going to shrink. Okay? Not by much. So there's a negative first-time derivative of, uh, of S over W. Now, Lubosch and Rob are very, very careful about uh, relating this to empirics. Uh, they're, they're cautious and circumspect, as they should be. S is hard to measure, and W is very, very hard to measure. Right? Okay? And I'm a theorist, so <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not going to provide very... Uh, very uh, uh, precise answers on this, but I started to think about whether, uh, sort of what I made of this. So, so as I did uh, uh, something that I presumably could do in, in grade school, right? So I took uh, S over W and, and split it up uh, into S over X and X over W. So X is the total wealth invested in stocks, so equity market uh, capitalization, if you like. So one crude approximation of so we'll just look at these two components together. So one crude approximation of S over X is the ratio of mutual funds share of equity market. So it's not the ratio of mutual funds share. It's the mutual funds share of equity market capitalization. Okay. So the question is, how has this behaved? Okay. This is a theorist doing a graph. Okay. So there's five data points. Uh, um, uh, so this is just uh, from the New York Stock Exchange's fact book from some years ago. And you could do better by looking at uh, flow of funds data from, from the Fed, and, and I assure you that the trend will be just the same. Okay, so, so we're looking at 1950 up to 2000 here, and part of this increase is definitely indexing, no doubt about that. But note that uh, indexing didn't really get started until the mid-1970s when, when Bogle started his index funds, and I, I suspect, I don't know how hard numbers on this, but it didn't really take off until the early to mid-1980s. Okay, so, so it does seem that S over X is increasing for quite a bit of this time. How about X over W? This is even harder. So one obvious way to think about it, if, if we just push my interpretation further, is X is the size of the equity market as a fraction of, if you like, the market portfolio of total wealth. I don't absolutely know how, I don't have a very good sense of, of how it's, be, how it's uh, behaved, but if S over W is going to be decreasing and S over X is, is increasing, then X over W has to be pretty uniformly and strongly decreasing over time. So, so this is just a question uh, that, that uh, I think we should keep in mind. A very, very crude approximation if you think that all wealth is eventually held by households. So then uh, one very, very crude uh, 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 interpretation of this would be the, the equity market participation rates by U.S. Uh, households, for example. Um, not very good with numbers, but I, I know it's been historically low, uh, and uh, I, I know, however, that it's been rising. Okay? So, I, I mean, this is very, very casual empiricism, and you'll notice that I only put empiricism in quotes because the, the casual is not in doubt. Um, uh, but it just makes one wonder, I mean, if, if Lubosch and Rob were to do a sort of careful empirical study of S over W, would they necessarily find that it's been falling over time? I think that, 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 that sort of uh, goes to the heart of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the remaining bits of the uh, um, uh, active management puzzle. Okay, so I, I'm going to provide some uh, 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 shamelessly self-advertising alternative indirective evidence about the size of S over W. So 
one indirect measure of whether S over W has gone down or gone up over time is whether the trades by active managers have larger or, small impact, uh, price, larger or smaller price impact over time. So, uh, so uh, in one of my recent papers, we looked at uh, persistent trade by uh, delegated portfolio managers using SEC 13F reports, and we found that it negatively predicts long-term returns. Okay. Um, and one of the things that we did in response to, to referee requests is that we divided the sample into two equal halves, and we found that in the, so this is 1980 to 2004, so it captures about, um, let's see, so it captures the, uh, the, uh, the second half of, of your sample. Um, and we further divided the sample into, into two bits, and, uh, and we found that in the first half, only the high institutional ownership stocks displayed, this, uh, 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 displayed our results. In the second, uh, all stocks effectively did, okay? Um, and and, and this, this anomaly, if you like, is this, this trend, the time trend in the anomaly, is very much in contrast to what you normally find for anomalies, which is that anomalies get smaller over time. So it, it would suggest to me that the price impact of active management's, management's trading is actually increasing. So one explanation, one uh, 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 potential explanation is S, of w, S over W is actually going up, but of course I don't know. I mean, there, there might be others. Um, so my final point is whether there is sort of more to the active management puzzle. So this, is the, this is the point, uh, uh, the second point in my musings. So, um, so I think Lubash and Rob take a fairly kind view towards uh, active fund managers and their investors. I apologize for any active fund managers who are here. We're probably all investors at some point in active fund management. So the, the active fund managers and their model are hostages of sort of decreasing returns to scale. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I'll be done in a minute. Um, so, and, and, and investors do their best to allocate across active fund management and, and other sectors, taking into account this decreasing returns to scale. This is a large empirical literature, starting with Chevalier and Ellison, and, and, and many people have built on that, suggests that investors are, are actually much worse than that. So they, they chase performance, even though we know separately performance at the individual fund level isn't persistent, and that funds behave perversely in response to this competition for funds, and there's a new literature, uh, very few papers in it as yet, that relates some of the perverse impacts of, of, of uh, the price impact of institutional trading to rational responses to funds competing for flows. Okay? So in Lubosch and Rob's uh, data set, sort of what is the evolving nature of the competition for funds? This is, a, this is an effect that they sort of shut down. They have competition in fees, but not competition across uh, for, uh, for flows. Um, so I would suspect that both N and M have changed quite a lot in their sample. So the question is sort of how did M over N behave? I don't have an answer to this question, but I think it would be quite interesting to, to know. I, I think the next natural step in this literature would be uh, sort of modeling competition for funds within the, the broader uh, canvas of diminishing returns to scale at the aggregate level. So I think it's a really, really interesting paper and opens the door to uh, lots of interesting potential research. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just take a minute. First of all, thanks for your insightful comments. And I will only address one of them, which I thought was the, the most interesting one, the very first one, the big one. Um, so, you, so you pointed out correctly that our model implies that S over W should have decreased over the past 40, for, four decades or so, whereas uh, you showed some evidence that shows that maybe it's not the case. Well, I, I actually think S over W has decreased over time. So let me talk a little bit about that. Um, first of all, we don't have a plot of the empirical S over W in the paper. Why? Because W is virtually impossible to measure. So W in our model is the wealth of the subset of investors who invest in with active managers. It's not all investors. It's only a subset of investors because man money managers must make money at the expense of somebody who's not modeled. And that somebody's wealth is not in W, so that's hard. And also W includes bonds, cash, all kinds of other things. Um, so W is hard to measure. But um, on to, to your uh, interesting figure showing that, the, uh, that mutual funds have grown over the past 40 years, that's true. Now, active industry is not just mutual funds and, and hedge funds. For example, before 1970, before 1971, there, there was not a single index fund out there. So I would argue that all money was actively invested before 1971. 
it wasn't invested in mutual funds and hedge funds. It was invested with brokers. So you had your broker, you called him up, and he picked four stocks for you. And, and with his or her advice, you would reshuffle your portfolio. So before index funds appeared, I, I think everything was actively invested. And we could have started with S over W of 1. Um, and then as index funds have grown since the 1970s, I would think that active management proportionally must have declined. So that's, that's my simplistic view, um, just backing out what must have happened to active funds from what we know happened to, to index funds. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Please visit us at www.agc.edu.